Hi YouTube land, Salem Straub here, Promethean Knives, and we got a brand new project, some new editing equipment, um, it's going to be a learning curve, but I'm sure it's going to be a learning curve for me as well it is, as it is for you, and so let's get right into it and I'll explain um, what kind of a project it is that we're working on at this moment. So it's the nature of my work that I make a lot of Damascus steel to make my knives out of and I try to make inventive Damascus a hallmark of mine I will leave whether I fail or succeed at that up to the viewer um, however you may be interested in this pattern that I'm working on here uh, I don't have a name for it yet but it's it's a tri-weave sort of a pattern uh, with hexagonal cores and what I mean is that uh, I based it on a seamless vector, you can see here, just found on the internet, printed out. It gives me a tri-weave pattern. You can see that the centers of all the patterns are hexagonal shapes. So I have got a pattern built up out of tons of little separate cut elements of steel with 30-degree uh, angles. And... Also, the cores are machined hexagonal stock made out of uh, 1080 alloy high carbon steel. When I'm done etching the alloy, the cores will etch to be a black color, and all of the weave elements will have the illusion of weaving over and under because of how I've arranged the pattern in these bars. But uh, I'll show all that stuff to you later. Let me just get this fit back together real quick because we have some cutting to do to make more of these little bits. I'm going to run out of stock form here pretty soon. So let's check that out. Now what I have here is a lot of scrap pieces of 1080 in the same length as each other. So I want to use these up because they're laying around. Then I have some other scrap, a little bit longer, I'm going to cut down to the same size. And then I have a whole other bar of 1080 that I'm going to cut to these lengths. So I can just have a big billet of solid 1080 that I'm going to force weld to make my hexagonal bar stock. So let's go for it. First I'm going to set the stop so that all the bars are easily cut to the same size without having to do much measuring. Okay, we're good there. It's uh, about to get pretty noisy. So that right there is enough 1080 to make a nice lot of hexagonal bar stock. Let's get it prepped for forward welding. 
Here I'm just taking a minute to deburr. Make sure these pieces sit nice and flat against each other in the stack. Right here, I'm taking a minute to knock everything parallel, get it clamped nice and tight so there's no gaps when it all gets welded together. There you have it, a nice packet of 1080 bar stock welded up and ready for forge welding. I'm going to grind these side beads down a little bit so there's not much MIG material on the skin of this after I weld it. Nice rebar handle with a, a little bit of a directional control to it. Here I'm firing up the blown ribbon burner forge and I've turned the sound on that forge way down because it is loud with that turbo blower. It's coming up to temperature. This is a PID controlled forge. Here we are uh, getting a lot closer to target temp. It's burning more stable. And here we're putting an oil soaked billet right in and we're going to start heating it up for the forge weld. Shut the door and now I've put a heat shield on so my handle doesn't overheat. Forge is up to temperature and that billet's going to soak for a minute. And now we are banging away. Forge welding is shut on the 300 pound Beaudry mechanical power hammer. Check it out.
At this point in the video, you can see that I begin to use a stop block uh, with one hand while controlling the billet with the other hand. The stop block makes sure that I don't forge the billet past a certain thinness and kind of gauges it to where I want to start my lathe machining process to make the clean bar out of. And here I'm beginning to tumble the bar out of square and knock the corners down so that I can get it roughly round and it'll machine into round stock all that much faster. Now that I'm done forging, I'm giving it a few post-forging heats to a low red heat to anneal it and make sure it doesn't just trash cutters on the lathe. So here you can see that I've cut the one long bar into two smaller bars that'll be easier to turn on the lathe. With that, we're pretty much done. Well guys, there you have it. It's been a productive session. We got uh, two pieces of round stock and we're ready for the next video, machining this. Thanks for watching.